Wow, that creating Heavens Aligned. Dude, this... Alright, this Heavens Aligned card has been one of the best cards in our deck, that's for sure. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Vi Diana. It's going to be our next deck today over in ranked. I think this one's going to be pretty good. I think this is a, a champion combination that will be surprising some opponents. They're both champions that can get a ton of power. Of course, when you level up your Diana, each time you play a Nightfall card, it's getting that plus two plus zero uh, for the round. So, you know, you play... Uh, some Nightfall cards, it turns into a 5-3, 7-9-3. You know, like, it gets pretty big pretty fast. Obviously, Vi um, grows, you know, whenever it's in your hand or in play. And, you know, you, you can uh, um, get a Vi to be a 10-4 fairly easily and level it up. And it's got a lot of power. And so, basically, what we have here is both champions can get really, really big. And we have two copies of Sumpworks map to be able to grant them Elusive and do a lot of damage and surprise some people. We also have just some other ways to have like some elusives, like we have some Lunari Shade Stalkers. We also have some heavy hitters like Crescent Guardian. Just have like some good Nightfall cards um, besides that. And then we also have a lot of card advantage. So if you notice, a lot of these cards cost exactly two mana. And then we have Insightful Investigator in here that each time we're playing one of our two cost cards, we're drawing a fleeting card. Um, you know, for each one. So then we can uh, have a lot of card advantage with the Insightful Investigator. Iterative Improvement can copy whatever we need to. We can get more um, Insightful Investigators for some more card advantage or some more um, heavy hitters with like Crescent Guardian and, you know, or an elusive Lunar Shade Stalker. Also, like the Crescent Guardian usually costs three, but we can use the Dust Petal Dust to make it cost two and, you know, enable the Nightfall. But then, of course, when it costs two, again, that's another card for Insightful Investigators. So that's a cool little uh, trick that we got going on here as well. So let's go and give it a try. Oh, I guess I should mention we also have this brand new card, which I'm I'm super excited about, uh, which is going to be a great Nightfall enabler. I think this this card works really well in Nightfall decks. So basically, for one uh, focus mana, yeah, which is a spell mana, you cast it first, so Daybreak this thing, and then you create your random Nightfall card in hand, and then your Nightfall is enabled for everything else. So I think this is a really good card for the Nightfall decks that can create a random Nightfall for you and also enable your nightfall units so all right that's it that's vi diana let's give it a try we're gonna go play five games in ranked but silver zed's a deck that i think has been very good even before the patch i've i've always thought very very highly of silver zed um i think like both champions attack really well and they're both in regions that are very aggressive with ionia and Sharima. and so yeah i think silver zed is an awesome champion combination and i think it has been for a long time i don't know what uh, the specific new version of it looks like exactly but yeah okay so we're playing against misfortune quinn this is a hard deck to mulligan because like i don't i don't know like all these cards like look pretty good and they're all one or two mana right so it's like none of these are like particularly ones that i'm like okay i should mulligan this i don't know i guess i'm gonna just keep my cards i don't know Oh, I would have mulliganed that. We were peaceful once. It's our time. And so, yeah, the iterative improvement for, like, my opponent's stuff, thinking that they probably have some cool stuff to copy. Them being a scout deck. You're covered. Oh, it's always such a good combo. It's always such a good combo. Nightfall decks are traditionally difficult to uh, sequence. And we have a difficult part to sequence right here. I think they want to play Misfortune, and they are scared of Diana and not playing Misfortune, but really, like, I, I kept, like, the iterative improvement on the Flea Feather Tracker available more so than... That I still I just do. Night flowers upon my blade. No more hiding. 
Leaf Feather Tracker and just challengers in general with like Misfortune and all that stuff is so good. No prey, no pay. Stop drawing Lunari Dustbringer. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Invisible to the ignorant. Protect and strike. You cannot hold us down. Too much warm. They forced us to choose death or the blade. It's been a perfect curve for them so far. Tracker, Protector, Misfortune, Bannerman. Find your own light within the darkness. Yours is a light I cherish, Moon Sister. I've got your back! No more lies. I will be heard. Ooh, got a Vi. Vi is interesting. I'll defend these forests to the end. All beauty is transient. Arise, find your path in the dark, and follow no false light. Their pride will cost them. Yep. These woods belong to us. Show them our metal. Gotta kill this misfortune. Who do I think is the worst champion in the game? You see, we were talking about Nocturne earlier. Nocturne's on that list, because like Nocturne's worse than Merciless Hunter. Um, I'm doing this my way. I don't know though. I don't know if that's necessarily then the I don't know if Nocturne's just the worst champion in the game. Oh, probably Leona. Yeah, I would I would say Leona. Yeah. Leona's just arachnoid sentry. So I'm thinking like Sharp Sight, like where we can still have Vi kill that through Sharp Sight, where we can't have Diana kill Misfortune through Sharp Sight. If they, yeah, as I was gonna say, if they have a barrier card, we're just dead. So I guess we're just dead. <laughs> Unless I can somehow stay alive. I need to try to steal this with Diana plus Sunpark's map. Oh gosh, we can't stay alive with that. Yeah, Miss Fortune's a great card. Okay. Alright, own one. So, yeah. That's the best. Yeah, and Le Leona can definitely win games. I, d I don't think there's any. I don't think there is a bad champion. You're just the question was like which one is the the worst out of all of them. And in my opinion, Leona is. But you know, Leona can still definitely win games and everything. Um, I think it's good if if scouts are back. I think that's a good thing. I think that scouts are a good healthy deck for the meta game. I gotta find Nightfall enablers, but I do like how Shade Stalker is an elusive, and I do like that it has three health for two mana. I don't think the Mystic Shot's a, a card that we shuffle away whenever there's an Echo. And I, I do, again, I really like Pale Cascade of like being able to help against these you know, PNZ removal spells and then also draw a card. So while I don't know exactly how my hand's going to work with those keeping those three two mana cards, I don't think any of them are necessarily a mulligan. Oh, I Victor is not even close to the weakest. Victor is in the top half, for sure. Victor is very good. Wow, 
Why do y'all think that Victor is really weak? I don't understand it. I really don't. I don't want to be woke you up. I turn it like so. I think Victor's one of the best champions. Saying because a card loses doesn't necessarily mean the card is weak, right? That could be like just the decks around it, you know, and everything like that. But I, I don't know. Like I, I was very like my best deck last format was a Victor deck that I had that was my best deck in the seasonal tournament. Like for example, Yasuo is Yasuo is a really, really good card and like tuned very like at a very high power level. The thing is, is Yasuo decks aren't very good because Stun and Recall have a lot of downsides to them, and like the rest of the deck like isn't necessarily that great. But like you know, Yasuo decks when they have Yasuo are, are incredible. So I wouldn't say that Yasuo is a weak card just because usually Yasuo archetypes are pretty weak. But, yeah, Victor was definitely the the card that I built around for, for the best deck that I had last format and last seasonal tournament. That, that card's very good. Okay, we're going to challenge, I think, you're going there, you're going there, you're going there. I'll just challenge there. I'm happy with these trades. Killing two of their things and nothing of mine dying so far. So I do have the back up Vi. Sheriff sends her orders. I'll chat with Cupcake later. All right. Show us what you can do. All right. Show us what you can do. Oh, Shen has a boat now. I for I completely forgot about that. We haven't done a Shen boat deck yet. Why have we not done that? I love playing Shen decks. Why, why don't we have a Shen? I forgot. I completely forgot Shen had a boat. How have we not played that yet? I guess because I forgot about it. That's how. I know I could have saved it with the Pale Cascade, but we had too many cards. Like with the Insightful Investigator, I was a little worried about that. Just let it die. Let it go. We'll get the Traveler instead. Yeah, we an invoke deck now. Invisible to the nah. All right, I guess that one's gone. Seeing tools, towns, and everything in between. Could have played the traveler there, but thought might you know might as well get a free shot at a free card. And you can just think of it like we burned the bottom card, right? Like it, all these cards are random. So you can just pretend like that card was at the bottom that we would have never found anyway.
Another Scrying Sands? Oh, I felt so smart of like getting that Scrying Sands out of their hand. They just had another. Alright, well. That's how it goes sometimes. Bust up that spell shield. Insightful Investigator is pretty awesome. We just have like infinite cards. Yes, of course. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. Here comes the punchline. I guess I should be playing this. All right, they're down to five. Oh, yeah. And I still have infinite cards. Don't blink or you miss me. Right, five out of six. The facts fall into place. That card's cool. How are they stopping? Oh, I can't play it. No. Five one. All right, I'm just going down. I'm gonna say how they stop aftershock plus mystic shot, but I guess I can't actually play both. That's how they stop it. Night flowers upon my blade. Now I don't really want to play, you know, like the pill cascade to save when, I, you know, then we just get another fleeting card that I can't do anything with. Oh, that must be pretty nice. We're still doing just fine, though. Just fine. I guess this great beyond. This journey is a discovery. We will resist. Yes, of course. Ooh, a Sunforce map. That's pretty interesting. And that would mean... Oh, wait. It's fleeting Sunforce map. No. Um. The facts fall into place. Everything fleeting. No, where are you going, opponent? Where are you going? Dude, Insightful Investigator was ridiculous. We had like 30 cards extra. And that may be an exaggeration, but we had a lot. <laughs> Alright, playing against some Sejuani Yetis. They're going Shadow Isles, so this is the Remitter Combo Yeti deck. We played this yesterday. I didn't do very well with the deck. I never had... Oh, I'm going to keep all this. I never had... Oh, I should mulligan the Mystic Shot, actually. Yeah, Mystic Shot should be mulligan for this matchup. Sorry. Anyway, I never was able to do the combo, except for one time. We were able to do the combo one time, and in that instance... Um, we got a crappy 10 drop and not a good 10 drop. And it was sad. Winter take you. That's an egg. Oh, gross. Hapless aristocrat? Unexpected card right there. I'm just gonna take the pass. I don't really. I only don't use one mana, right? Like I'm just gonna take the pass. They forced us to choose death or the blade. Find your own light within the darkness. Yours is a light I cherish, Moon Sister. <laughs> I guess I should have been prepared for that.
Could have been prepared for that. So setting up like you know, I didn't play like these things to set up like more fleeting free fleeting cards. Okay, so this is you know not the Yeti deck that I was expecting it to be. This is a Sejuani control deck. Nothing escapes my watch. Find your own light within the darkness. Yours is find your path in the dark and follow no false light. All that glitters is mine. Man, I can't quite get Diana to be five power. Ugh, I can't get can't get Diana to be five power, can I? The only other Nightfall follower is the Doom Beast, and I'm one mana short from copying Doom Come, Beast. A new phase awaits. I could still hit. I was gonna say we could hit a nightfall. Oh, but that has nightfall. Oh, right. Well, never mind. Oh, well. I was, okay. All right. 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 That's how that card works. I definitely remembered that and knew that the whole time. Focus. about the hold that thing's leveled up it does that all right fine you win howling abyss can't be mad at you okay well i just you know i wish i would have mulligan differently right like i just i was expecting a different matchup than what we got i was expecting yetis and howling abyss is a great card and yeah round six howling abyss definitely got me pretty good Hey, I, I know uh, what to expect a little bit better here with this deck. Do I want to keep two Mountain Goats? Sure. What am I getting another one of those insightful investigators later on in the game? They were pretty good. Don't really understand why they do sad face. <laughs> wow, that creating heavens aligned. Do this. All right, this Heavens Align card has been one of the best cards in our deck, that's for sure. It has been very good. They got four cards in hand and a house fighter in play.
there's our insightful investigator. Let's save that. I'm probably going to be iterative improvementing the house spider, would be my guess. Seems to be sad about a lot of things. They are playing Twisted Swain, which has, you know, tons and tons and tons of cheap cards. Yet they're still sad about a lot of stuff. Investigating officer, unit six. So we both have five cards in hand. Unfortunately, we burned the Aftershock, but again, Aftershock could have just been the bottom card, right? Like, that's, they're all random. Yes, of course. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Man, that Pill Cascade, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just going to be burning stuff. Cause yeah, cause if I if I play Diana, we get another fleeting card, and then I play Pale Cascade, we get another fleeting card. I'll go ahead and mute them. So it will be a lot of fleeting cards that we burn, but I think it's still the best play. Did burn some fleeting cards. We got more where that came from. Invisible to the ignorant. The facts fall into place. Oh, the Vi. Sorry, Vi. Want to have a backup investigator. Must we fight? I'm I didn't play the Sky Shadows here because I'm waiting on Investigator being played before playing the Sky Shadows. I think my best play is just the investigator. Hidden clues. It's all here. I'm not gonna let Twist of Fate red card happen. I 
I wanted to have the opportunity to be able to continue to play stuff after this. Okay. Heavens Aligned has been awesome. Hey, Kendall. By my hand, will not set today. Okay, that's a cool card. I can stun some stuff. Got stun, challenge, challenge. Alright, so let the pill cascade you. They did have the Twist of Fate for the Powder Keg. Something for all. Twist of Fate. Such little lies. Yes, of course. I will break them. Let's do this. Fear not death. Insightful Investigator being awesome like always. Oh, I should have played the Heavens line right there because I would have had both Daybreak and Nightfall, wouldn't I? Okay, I'm going to start with you. And that would mean... Order, sir. Bring forth our army. Okay. Alright, so you make both Daybreak and Nightfall right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess I could have played the Diana first. Yeah, I guess I could have played this Diana first. Alright, anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and replace you, because you are injured. Yeah, I should have played the Diana first. I just worried about, I don't know, focus speed. Okay, they're not doing anything else with that other card. Balding Yeti with the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, one mana create. <laughs> Both of these, like they they have been these this heaven the line card has been awesome. Alright, what card am I getting rid of if I play Vi right here? I guess because I want to play Vi to challenge the Leviathan. I guess it's maybe Insightful Investigator. I guess you've done your job, Insightful Investigator. I think you've done your job. Big fists around Vi. Stick around. I'll show you. Not stunning anything. I tried being Trouble coming at ya. Face your heretic. Alright, so obviously they have to do stuff first. Because otherwise they did. You've got legs. Use them. Charmed, I'm sure. All right, so I either go for killing them with the Pale Cascade here, or I go for killing the Leviathan with the Pale Cascade over here. It's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. This is, like, the safest thing, right? Because it's because if I go for Pale Cascade on the Robin, and this thing just does one damage, then it kills the Robin, and then we're in trouble. But going for it over here means they're not going to have the Leviathan in play still, so we are not in trouble unless that thing does four, which I don't think it does. Oh, Lissandra Talia. Alright, we're gonna have to be fast. We're gonna have to be aggressive. We have one aftershock in here. This is a fast aggressive hand. I don't behold a nightfall card, I guess, right now. Oh, yes, I do. It's, I'm sitting at Pale Cascade. That's a nightfall card. I don't have like everything died to Avalanche. Right, like I don't want to have every single card in my opening hand die to Avalanche. Oh, come on. It's our time. All right, 
right, let's go. Let's go with this. I still have two mana for Pale Cascade. I guess we use. How can you cycle cap? You, you think that we can still win? Like how how do you envision a win happening? They're gonna get two eight eights. They're gonna have two eight eight overwhelms and a four five. Like what do I what do I do? I guess I just play my vi. Here comes the punchline. These aren't like the Yetis that are like the one mana five fives for the Yetis. These do you know do count as eight mana cards, so they're not. It's not very good to iterative improvement them. My win rate versus this deck is like 10%. Now that seems too high. I don't I don't beat it one out of 10 times. There was definitely some things I was really impressed with with the deck. You know, like we did have good card advantage and like the insightful investigator was really impressive with just how like this deck worked out. Um, I've played like different insightful investigator decks before where it hasn't been as impressive, but I think with how proactive the deck is, I think that actually was a big deal with the insightful investigator instead of just being very reactive and just trying to draw more removal spells that may or may not work. I think that playing it with like a whole bunch of units where you just always get to throw your units out there. I, I was very impressed with the insightful investigator. And then mostly heavens align looked incredible for a card this card really overperformed it was frequently getting us like targon invoke cards and you know it even got us like one time we got a heavens align that got us a unspeakable horror that then created another heavens align and that heavens align created an eclipse dragon and um some daybreak card and uh yeah, like that's <laughs> like that's just ridiculous. Then uh, we didn't get to play the Eclipse Dragons. We killed our opponent, but that would have been even more cards. Um, yeah, I was so impressed by this card. Uh, with the deck, though, I think like the Sumpworks maps didn't look very good, right? Like we just we never needed to do like out of the five games, Sumpworks map never mattered. And so I think that that's where I would probably uh, change because I know you you can do like some cool Diana um, Vi stuff with that, but. It felt like we were just like kind of being real aggressive and outgrinding them anyway, and it, it just seemed like the the Sumpworks maps were just a little cheeky and just weren't really that necessary. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I I could I, we had the one aftershock. That's not really enough though, right? Like if you want to if you want to like actually try to beat the Thrall deck, you know, we're gonna need you know all three aftershocks for sure. So like that's a spot that you could you could take out Sumpworks maps to tr to put in more aftershocks if you want to try to win that matchup. Um, you can also, I, what I would do though, is I would at least just take the first one out and just get the third Shade Stalker in. Cause Shade, Shade Stalker looked good. You know, like it, it's just a good body. It's elusive. Um, it looked good. You know, like I think this is, this is worthy of a three of, and of course it's Nightfall to help out your Diana and everything like that. So like, that's the, that's the one thing I would change. Cause with Sunburst map, if you do have it and you do use it, you never need the second one, right? Like the, the first one's good. Um, and maybe like get a surprise win with like the first one with a, a sump works map on a vibe. You don't you don't need two of them. And with the card draw in the deck, I think one's just fine. Um, 
So like that's that's like one thing I would definitely change. But for personal preference, I would just rather have the second aftershock over Sumpworks map in general. But uh, if you want to have like the the surprise kills with Sumpworks map, Diana and Vi, I would still just recommend it just to be a one of, and then three Shade Stalkers. I like Cloven Ways. Cloven Ways is good against like the eight eights. Like Cloven Ways actually good against those eight eights. You know, so like Cloven Way aftershock, like those cards are good against the thralls. Um, but yeah, for personal preference, I would go. I would go this route. I would go third Shade Stalker, second aftershock. Um, and you know, like I, w I wouldn't be mad at going three aftershock, <laughs> of course. But I, I understand. Um, you know, some people like playing the the Sumpworks map and and you know doing the the crazy things that it can possibly do. So that's cool too. Um, all right, so there we go. Uh, that's what I would kind of change there. But yeah, I liked it a lot, and I liked this Heaven's Aligned. Heaven's Aligned Diana looked strong, and then. Um, you know, having all these twos with like the in investigator also looked real strong. So pretty, pretty impressive looking deck here. All right, but that's going to be it here for Vi Diana. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and feel free to leave those comments about the deck. Hopefully y'all were impressed with the deck like I was. Um, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to try to help beat those thralls, get that second aftershock in here. Um, but yeah, there was like a bunch of cool stuff that we got to do with here. Sky Shadows look great. Um, you know, like that extra, you know, that extra free two mana. Very, very important. Yeah, it looked good. It, I think it, it looked very solid. All right, but that's going to be it here for Vi Diana. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.